Hi guys, so I asked y'all a few days ago if you would be interested in seeing some designs and refs and just listening to me drop random lore on one of my main series that I'm writing called Storm Chasing. And here it is. Sorry it took so long, finding enough time to successfully voice over an entire video is a lot harder than it should be, and I don't know why. But anyways, here it is. So, about two weeks ago, it occurred to me that while I've been spending a bunch of time getting the information about the world and the future of this particular storyline down, one main issue kept appearing. I hardly had any lore on the angels of this universe, as I've spent a significantly much more time working on demon lore, considering one of the main characters is a demon. However, I've been seriously neglecting the angels, and although they are technically less important than the demons, and especially at the beginning of the books, they are still extremely important to the storyline and I couldn't neglect them any longer. While I started coming up with some lore for them, I started to come up with different kinds of angels as a parallel to the ranks of, that the demons have in hell. I decided to give every kind of angel a slightly different appearance to make them seem more individualized than their original designs and the current designs that I have for the average demon. So I'll be showing y'all how I designed them here. Y'all might have to pause to read this next part. But a few days ago, I wrote down a note sheet of the six kind of angels I came up with, their power rings and their jobs. I'll go over each of these during the speed paint, so let's just go ahead and get started. Some basic info about angels is that similar to the demons of this universe, they can have the facial feature and or body type of any of the Wings of Fire tribes, or they could have a mix of features from multiple tribes. The individual I'm drawing now, in case you can't tell, is a heavily rainwing-based individual with the rainwing-shaped head and a very lean, very skinny body type similar to that of a rainwing. So first off are the most powerful angels known as the Seraphims. These guys are classified by having six wings and they are normally the largest and tallest of pretty much any angel you'll ever see. Y'all will get a visual of that at the end of the video where I make a height chart for them. Seraphims are the angels that create the rules around heaven and are responsible for keeping the peace. They're natural leaders and tend to be pretty chill, but pretty serious for the most part. I don't have any more info on the particular individual that I'm drawing right now, but I plan to find some role for her in the storyline at some point, as well as the roles for other individual angels that I will be coming up with during this video. In the top right corner, there's the average Seraphim's alternate form, an eye with six wings and a crowned halo. Now, angels in general are always white in color, but more often than not, they have some sort of marking in their own individual color. For this angel, I chose purple for her color, so her eyes will be purple, her halo will be purple, and all the markings on her body in general will be the same shade of purple. But yeah, that's about it for the seraphims. The second most powerful are the cherubs, more commonly known as the archangels. These guys are most easy to identify due to them having four wings and noticeably longer flight feathers than most other types of angels. These guys are messengers and they tend to be the most common type of angel you would see giving someone a blessing or a gift of some type. These guys are generally super nice and friendly and they avoid conflict as much as they can. The particular individual I'm drawing right now is Castiel. He was originally from one of my older stories but once I realized that I would probably never touch that storyline again, I decided to recycle him into storm chasing where he would be put to more use. This is a pretty basic design and over the course of the series he will obtain some scars on his neck and wings, but I won't draw them here for the sake of the general archangel design. Castiel, also known as Cass, is the first angel that is introduced in the series and I love this 3000 something year old bean very very much, but yeah, that's about it. In third place of the power ranks of heaven are the thrones. These guys guard the gates of heaven and do the final judging of a soul before a soul can enter. Thrones are probably the easiest type to identify as they wear silver or gold rings around their horns, necks, arms, legs, and tails. And more often than not, these rings have eyes on them. These guys also have feathered frills by their ears, similar to that of a rainwing ear frill, except their feathers. As well as that, thrones can either have two or four wings, but most commonly they just have two. Thrones are really good at seeming to be and acting really intimidating, when in reality, the moment you get to know them, they turn into the most dramatic, drama-loving goobers you've ever met. Thrones can intimidate the heck out of literally anyone due to the size of their natural forms when you first meet one, 
but they're just really friendly as other angels once you get to know them for a bit, and they love drama. For this particular design, I went with two wings as well as a bunch of gold rings and pale yellow eyes and markings. I went for a mostly nightwing body type, and I think the character turned out kind of cute, which is not exactly the look I was going for, but I ended up really liking it. And I hope I can figure out a role for him in the storyline at some point, because I really like this design. In fourth place in terms of power are the Dominions. These guys are the information angels. They know almost everything about everything, and they keep all the records of heaven. They are extremely intelligent and with incredible memories, and they can recall almost every detail of anything they ever witnessed. Their most identifiable feature is the fact that they're covered in markings that look like eyes, almost like tattoos of eyes all along their necks and tails, as well as faint markings along their faces and talons as well. These eye-like markings can turn into actual eyes if a dominion is using their power, and these eyes are fully functional and will literally watch everything. Dominions are commonly thought to be very serious, and there's kind of a joke going around about how dominions have terrible sense of humor. In reality, they're just super introverted, but if you manage to get one to talk to you, they're normally pretty nice. Dominions are, ironically, the greatest conspiracy theorists you will ever meet, and if you ever ask one about their theories, you better make sure you don't have anything to do for the rest of the year, because they will never let you out of that conversation. Anyway, the individual I'm drawing right now is actually the wife of the cherub I drew earlier, Castiel. I don't have a name for her yet, and we probably won't see her very much, but she's pretty chill. Anyway, that's about it for the Dominions. In fifth place in terms of power are the Virtues. These guys are pretty basic looking, but they have similar jobs to Archangels, although more often than not, they have their own jobs around heaven, such as teachers, scientists, blacksmiths of angelic weapons, etc. They're second weakest of all angels in terms of power. This particular angel that I'm drawing right now is named Uriel, and he's one of Castiel's friends, and he actually teaches Castiel's daughter Pandora, which we will see her later. Yeah, that's pretty much it about the virtues. I don't have much on them because they're not terribly important. In sixth place are the powers. These guys are the weakest of all angels in terms of overall power, but they make up for it by being absolutely feral gremlins of violence. Powers help guard the borders of heaven, but they are also sent as warriors into the dragon world. These guys look pretty similar to virtues, except they normally wear armor and have at least one scar on their bodies. Because powers don't have very strong, well, very strong powers, they rely on using weapons and fighting skills. Powers normally have some degree of anger issues, but one of the props to them is the fact that they have the highest pain tolerance of all the kinds of angels. They aren't terribly popular with other angels, as they tend to be kind of arrogant, and they aren't terribly friendly. They are extremely suspicious of others, and they have a hard time trusting. The character I'm drawing right now is named Naomi, and like Castiel, she was recycled from an older story. Although her overall design and body type has changed, her personality is pretty much the same. She's going to be a bit of an arrogant jerk, but I haven't decided yet if she's going to be an actual threat to the main group or just mildly unhelpful. Anyways, that's about it for the powers. Now, this last angel I'm going to show y'all is actually what would be considered a hybrid. Her name is Pandora, and she's the young daughter of Castiel and that virtue I showed y'all earlier. Pandora is pretty much the equivalent of a five-year-old dragonette, but time passes differently for angels and they age differently. So she's actually probably over 100 years old. Anyways, because her father is an archangel and her mother is a virtue, she has features from both. Four wings in the eye shape of her dad and the eyes across her body like her mom. I want to go ahead and point out that there are hybrid angels and they are not treated the same as hybrid dragons and wings of fire. As y'all know, hybrid dragons are pretty much viewed differently from other dragons that only identify with one tribe, but hybrid angels are not. Hybrid angels are extremely common, about 30% of the angels in heaven are some sort of hybrid, and they're honestly not a big deal at all. Anyways, Pandora is an absolute sweetheart, and she's just an adorable little bean, just like her dad. Now, for the height chart, I did have to update the design for my demon character, Cece, so bear with me for a moment.
Okay, back to the height chart. So first we have Ghost, the average five-year-old dragonet. Then Eve, the average-sized reaper. Storm, slightly taller than the average skywing adult. Average-sized for the powers, virtues, dominions, thrones, and archangels. And then Cece, who's a whole head taller than pretty much everybody else. And then we have the Seraphims, who are the only beings that can rival a demon as powerful as Cece in height. And then we have a different height chart representing just the average size of each character and just how they look beside each other. Okay, that's about it for this video. Let me know if y'all are curious about learning about any more storm chasing lore. Okay, bye!